The trade deadline is a little less than 24 hours away. Well, depending on how long it takes my computer to edit this video. But it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are all expecting, well, most of us probably expecting the Baltimore Ravens to make a move. But in my opinion, especially because we expect the move to come on defense. Now, there are some sneaky options for some offensive players, mainly at the guard position. Guys like Brandon Sheriff, guys like Zach Martin. Those could be some sneaky options to make what is a strength even stronger. Even though, depending on who you ask, they might be like, oh, offensive line is strength. I don't know about that one. But you could make your offensive line even stronger. Because, again... In my opinion, that's what it's all about. Derrick Henry, Ravens had a good run game. They got him, made it even stronger. Ravens, pass game, they have been killing it. what they do? They went out and got Deontay Johnson to make them what? Even stronger. So if they decided to do that with the offensive line, I wouldn't be mad at it. But it ain't got to stop there. Because obviously most of us are focused on the Baltimore Ravens adding some help on the defensive side of the ball. But who and where? Now, we all know the Baltimore Ravens. Their pass rush is abysmal. It is bad. It's terrible. It's rough. It has just not been good at all. And I don't know what happened to it because we've been saying it for weeks. Like early on this season, the pass rush was really good early on. Then all of a sudden it just disappeared. Maybe I wonder if that's when Travis Jones first got hurt. Maybe that's when it started disappearing. But regardless, it just has not been there. Ravens try to blitz. They, they send five. They send six. They may send seven. They all out. But they're, they're sending 11. And they still won't get there half the time. So Baltimore Ravens need to be able to have a pass rush sometime. Because, again, you're not just going to hold everybody from blitzing every single play. We get that. But they need to be able to establish a pass rush without having to send the whole house. So... With, when, we're, when we're looking at possible trades for the Baltimore Ravens, the way that I feel about it, I think the Baltimore Ravens at pass rush, they either need to go big or go home. Don't go at all. Because I feel like if you add just another guy, and I hate saying just another guy because these guys are NFL players, so they, none of them are just another guys. But I feel like if you're going to add a pass rusher, it has to be a game wrecker. It has to be. You can't just add somebody just for the sake of, oh, okay, we added somebody, there we go. No, you need to add somebody that's going to make an immediate, significant difference. Now, obviously, we all want Max Crosby. We would all love for the Baltimore Ravens to get Max Crosby. Raiders said they're not trading Max Crosby, but things can change. <laughs> As we've seen, we saw it with the Devontae Adams. Things can change. When teams are losing, when teams are struggling, and then with the Raiders, they just fired a bunch of coaches uh, yesterday. When that happens, teams may be a little more willing to listen to offers from different teams. It, may, it, it would not hurt for Eric Acosta. Pick up the phone, get him a little call, just say what's up. Now we know the likelihood of it going down, hey, it's, it's small. But then you could turn to somebody else like a Michael Parsons. And I know initially you may be thinking, man, and Raven, are you crazy? That sounds insane. He, wait a minute, he's still on his rookie deal. Oh my God, what? Oh, he didn't get paid yet. Oh, and the Cowboys, that their season with Dak Prescott, their season is pretty much in the tank already. But Dak Prescott is now, unfortunately, he's getting ready to be out with a hamstring injury, and they said that it's a lot more serious than they anticipated. So he could be out for the next couple of weeks, possibly even a little bit longer than that. So the Cowboys' season. Even with a Dak Prescott, it wasn't looking good, but now they're not going to have their starting quarterback, their highest paid quarterback in the league. They're not going to have him out there, and that's a big blow to the Dallas Cowboys. So their season is it's not looking good. C.D. Lamb is dealing with an injury, even though they said he's going to be able to play through it, but he's dealing with something too, so that could impact him. So with Michael Parsons, he's supposed to be getting back from injury, so maybe the Ravens could be like, you know what? Oh, Michael Parsons, Penn State, pass rusher. Difference maker, game wrecker. We remember when we played the Dallas Cowboys a couple of weeks ago, and they he absolutely destroyed Tyler Linder, but I'll never forget that play. He lined up right over the center and said, oh, Linda Flinder, excuse me. And we know what I got, Linda Flinder, it was just a little one-off, because we know I got to be holding it down. But Micah Parsons, he's somebody that you can do so many different things with. You can line, you ain't got to just have him on one side, of, on the left side of the defensive line or the right side of the defensive line. You can line him up everywhere. He can do so much for your team. And he is what? A game wrecker. 
with the pass rush, Ravens cannot be complacent with it. They really can't be. And now this one, now I know this one wouldn't happen. But, I mean, you know what? Never say never, though. But, yeah, this one ain't going down. But just because it was on my mind, we got to speak on it. The Browns, they just got beat up. They got whooped by them Chargers yesterday. And they apparently, they like, all right, everything must go. Not necessarily everything, but a lot must go. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about Zadarius Smith. Now, with Zadarius Smith, he would upgrade the Baltimore Ravens pass rush. I, I just... I'm trying. I've been trying to think about it, even though I don't think it's going to happen. They've been talked that he's going to get moved to the Lions. And, hey, maybe by the time you see this video, maybe it'll happen already. But um, Zadarius Smith, I just I don't feel like that would be, like, the move that would, like, all right, yeah, there we go. That's our pass rush right there. We got it now. It could help. But I don't know if that would be, like, to, to push us over the top as far as the pass rush. But it could certainly help. But um, it wouldn't hurt. If Eric DaCosta, hey, pick up the phone, just see what, it, see what they ask about gear. Just see, just see. Just pick up the phone. And, and I know they probably going to hang up on you quicker than you could dial that number. But just hit up Andrew Barry, just, 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 just to see. But um, some other names that have come up recently, um, and uh, they've been coming up a lot, guys like Calais Campbell. Now, Calais Campbell, he's somebody that could help as far as an interior defensive lineman. And you could move him around a little bit, too. Um, but Calais Campbell, if they were to get a Calais Campbell, that could help Matt Abike. Because we know Matt Abike, there's been a lot of talk about Matt Abike amongst Ravens fans saying that, man, he disappeared. He done got his money. And where did he go? And there been, there's been some arguments amongst Ravens fans like, hey, Matt Abike, he's getting double teamed every single play. What you want him to do about that? How do you expect him to react? What, like, what, you want him to just beat double teams every play? But then there's a, people who will say, um, he's getting paid the big money to do what? Make big plays. So, yeah, he still got to step up. Double team, triple team, quadruple. Well, that won't be quadruple. But Ravens need just, excuse me, Namdi Matabike. My apologies. They need Namdi Matabike to really step it up. Um, because, again, that you're a franchise player. And you got the tag, then you got the deal in order to remain with the team so you can continue to make plays for the team. So I think that the Ravens, they, they need more out of him. And I know it's tough. I know it's really tough, but they need more. But in order to help him get more, that's when you can go get some help. So Calais Campbell, somebody that I know people have talked about. But another name that could be a sneaky one is Jeffrey Simmons from the Titans. And now, whoa, what the Titans? They may be like, look, we shut the Ravens down last year when they tried to get Derrick Henry. And I was talking to one of my guys a little bit, a little bit ago. And I was telling him, like, man, like, the Ravens, Oh, imagine if they would have got Derrick Henry last year with that offense last year. That was really good. It ain't like this year's offense good, but it was still really good. And then they added Derrick Henry to that with last year's defense. If they wouldn't have forgot about him in the play, oh, my goodness. Ooh. But anyway, um, the Titans might be like, you know what, Jefferson, nah, we ain't doing business with the Ravens. But, again, it can't hurt to call because Jeffrey, somebody like Jeffrey, that wouldn't be just another guy. That would be a – difference maker a game wrecker and that's what the ravens gotta get again it can't just be another guy it gotta be somebody if you got i can't even say if i'm gonna I'm say when when you trade for a pass rush of baltimore ravens don't just settle aim high aim high now i know there's also jadavian Clowney. i think he he will be somebody that as we know he could make some plays. I think he, he made a big play in the game yesterday with the, 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 the Panthers. They end up beating the Saints. So that would be another good one right there, Jadavian Clowney. Now, um, there's some other options, too, as far as pass rushers. Uh, there's guys that have been brought up like uh, Cam Jordan. I, know, I feel like anybody really talking about him, but a lot of people have been talking about the possibility of a Chase Young. Now, Chase Young is something that I actually thought was going to happen last year. Um, and it was said that the Baltimore Ravens were interested in him. And I really thought that they were going to acquire him, especially when the Baltimore Ravens had that joint practice with the Commanders last year. Um, and I was thinking, all right, joint practice with the Commanders. They're going to really be able to get a up close and personal look at Chase Young. Uh, and then that's probably when they're going to make that move for him. But it obviously never happened. Uh, and then he ended up going to New Orleans uh, afterwards. But it is what it is. So there, there, there's been a, quite a bit of names that have been floating out there but the biggest thing that the Baltimore Ravens need to do again at pass rush it got to be a difference maker now something else cornerback cornerback in the secondaries there have been some people saying the Ravens should get a cornerback there have been some people saying the Ravens should get a safety now at safety I don't see them making a move there 
I, I, I don't. It's, of course, a possibility. Anything's a possibility right now. But I see the moves that the Baltimore Ravens could potentially make would be for a pass rusher and for a corner. Now, if it's a corner, whose position would that corner possibly take? Now, there have been names like Marshawn Lattimore that have been floating out there. That would be a good one. There have been J.C. Horn that would be, who comes from the, uh, the Panthers. That would be another solid one. So that could certainly help a lot. Reason being because with Brandon Stevens, I – Again, I I just I got to attribute it to the scheme, right? And all the coaches that we lost. We lost the secondary coach. We lost a defensive line coach. We lost our previous defensive coordinator. We lost a lot of people uh, in the defense on the coaching staff and personnel and because I got to attribute it to that and the scheme because literally so many people on this Ravens team who we were like, oh, man, this player is so good. This player is amazing. This player is great. So many of them have dropped this year. We look at guys like a Roquan Smith, and you think about, like, man, so many people are pointing out, like, Roquan Smith just has not looked good overall. Overall this year, he's had some good moments, but overall it has just been rough for Roquan Smith. Like, well, what is going on? Then Brandon, Ste Brandon Stevens last year was amazing. He was amazing. But I don't know what happened. It's like he like completely like fell off and he went back to his old ways. So could it be the secondary the coach Denar Wilson that they lost had that big of an impact on it? It could be. But somebody made a really good suggestion about Brandon Stevens. If the Baltimore Ravens were to trade for a corner. So if they trade for a corner, say they trade for Marshawn Lattimore. Just using him as an example. They would acquire him. He could be outside corner. Then Nate Wiggins and Marlon Humphrey could be other outside corner. And then, of course, if Nate Wiggins is on the field, then Marlon Humphrey, you kick him inside. He could be a slot guy. All right, you got Mar Marshawn Lattimore, Marlon Humphrey, Nate Wiggins. Those are your corners. Then, of course, you got Kyle Hamilton. He can play everywhere. Uh, you know that go. But anyway, you could put Brandon Stevens at safety. And that... And when they said it, I said, oh, my goodness. That, in my opinion, is such a great idea. Reason being, one, he's already played safety. He got the experience. Two, he's played a lot of corner. So he got experience there. So you could move him around, do some different things with him. But if he's a safety, you ain't got to worry about him getting his head around. You ain't got to worry about him turning his head around because he would already be facing the offense. But then on top of that, I think that Brandon Stevens would be a good safety because he ain't afraid to get physical either. He ain't afraid to come up and tackle somebody. He ain't afraid to come up and hit somebody. He ain't afraid of none of that. He ain't afraid of contact at all. So if the Baltimore Ravens were to do something, oh, I, I think that would be great in my opinion. But obviously you would have to get a corner to move. But then if you do that, you get a corner, that allows your chess pieces that you have you to, just to have another one. Because, look, you got guys like Kyle Hamilton. You can put him everywhere. You got guys like Brandon Stevens. You can move him around too. You got guys like Ardarius Washington. He can play different positions as well. So that would allow your defense to have that much more flexibility. And that would allow Arthur Millette to sort of <laughs> chill out too. Because Arthur Millette, man, um, did y'all see the game yesterday? We talked about it during the live stream. Arthur Millette, ooh. <laughs> he gave up uh, two touchdowns. But thank goodness we were playing Bo Nix. Had that been a lot of other quarterbacks, that's 14 points right there. But – since it was Bo Nix, and he had them two big overthrows. One was on fourth down, and another one was on, I want to say it was a third down, third and goal. But both of them came against Arthur Millette, and he was beat bad on both plays. And I get it, cornerbacks get beat. It happens. It's the toughest position in, in, in the league to play. But it's just rough, man. And is it an Arthur Millette thing or just a defensive thing as a whole? A, a little bit of both, honestly. But, um... If you added another cornerback, a, a, a quality cornerback, it could just help in so many different facets of the Baltimore Ravens defense. So those are my ideas for as far as trades that should go down and could possibly go down. What are y'all feeling? Who are y'all thinking that the Baltimore Ravens should get? Or and who do you think the Baltimore Ravens will get? And do you think it's a possibility that both could be the same answer? Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be a part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, and if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. You can send your question directly on Patreon. For everybody else, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. First, before we get into it, got to give a special shout out to my guy, Zega, who just became a Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, so I appreciate you, Zega. And let's just get straight to his question because I'm sure it's a banger like they always are. My guy, he said the following. Oh, now I'm having some technical difficulties. Oh, there you go. He said, I just became a Team Keep It Clean patron, but 
I don't know how to send questions on it. It's, it's all good. I'm sure you get it figured out. No rush, but I appreciate you becoming a patron in the first place. So thank you, my guy. He said, anyway, I just wanted to say it was a good win all around. Uh, a little bit of flaws here and there. We got the win, though. Now, time for them to get that pass rusher. Come on back home, Clowney. All right, so my guy Zega is, he wants Jadavian Clowney back. And I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Now, if you do get a Jadavian Clowney, that'd be a good move. And like we talked about, he would, he would not be just a pickup just to say, all right, we got somebody. But he, obviously, as we know from last year, he was a difference maker. Um, but if you got Jadavian Clowney, then that could not be it. You still would have plenty of opportunities to get even more. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean, patient, my guy, David. He said, hey, Graven, hope you're doing well. Oh, David, we're doing great. I hope you're doing even better. He said, I'm interested to see what you think about the Raiders, Browns, Saints, or Cowboys being trade targets for the Ravens before the trade deadline. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Good timing because that's what we literally went over at the very beginning of this video. All of those teams. We talked about Max Crosby, Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith. Talked about Cam Jordan, Chase Young. Talked about Marshawn Lattimore, too. Talked about it with the Cowboys, with Zach Martin, uh, and Micah Parsons. So, again, Ravens, they if, for pass rusher. It, it, it got to be that guy. Game record difference maker. Uh, he said, I think all of these teams have real defensive pieces the Ravens could target. Cam Jordan, Michael Parsons, Darius Smith, Honey Badger, Max Crosby. Do you think we see someone from these teams or come from these teams to the Ravens? And do you see EDC finessing another GM in the process? Yeah, he got to take advantage. He got to take advantage. Those teams are all struggling. They got bad records right now. Look at the Saints, the Cowboys. Uh, so. You, you got to take advantage of that for sure. We talked about the Titans earlier too. So this is EDC, a big, big opportunity right here to make some, some real good trade. Don't got to just be one. Some real good trades to make this Baltimore Ravens team a lot stronger than they are. Trade for another linebacker. Whoa, now this is a different one right here. This question came from my guy Trap Mac. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Trap? Uh, I love your videos, and I make sure I watch every one you drop on YouTube. Oh, appreciate that. Oh, okay. He said, I also want a free jersey on the autograph app because of you. Okay. Hey, that's what I like to hear, man. I, I, I'm glad you got to get that free jersey, man, because free is always nice. Uh, he said, thank you for showing me the app in the first place. Now, my question, how do you feel about us going for another linebacker? The Cowboys are looking pretty sad right now. Maybe we should push to pick up their tackle leader on defense, Eric Kendrick. He's currently in a one-year contract for $3 million. The desperate Cowboys might be willing to take a draft pick for, for him, and he's experienced enough to take some of the pressure off of Roquan. Mm. I feel like ever since we lost PQ, Roquan hasn't been able to fully trust Simpson, which causes him to overthink or be out of position every now and then when it matters most. I feel like a solid, experienced linebacker can relieve the mental battle uh, he might be going through and help him focus on his job alone. That's very interesting, and I haven't heard anybody really say anything like that as far as getting a uh, veteran linebacker, especially veteran inside linebacker, at least. Of course, they talked about pass rushes and whatnot, outside linebackers, but a veteran inside linebacker. Now, with Roquan Smith, um, there seems to be a big drop off from last year to this year. The biggest change, obviously, Patrick Queen has been, he's, he left, he went to the Steelers, but it's also been the scheme. Now, if, now I can't say that it is this, but if Roquan is having an issue understanding and really just understanding the scheme from Zach Orr, if they bring in somebody from the outside in, um, could they possibly also have trouble understanding the scheme? Uh, from Zach Orr. With Trent Simpson, uh, he's been in this scheme too, so he got to learn it all offseason. Um, but with Trent Simpson, been out there, and he's been out there a limited amount of time, but he's looked good to me. So I, I wonder if it could just be, you don't have to trade for a linebacker, but have Trent Simpson out there on the field more. So that could be part of the solution to a lot of your big problems. Already there. Speaking of Trent Simpson, next question came from my guy, Albert. He said, hey, Graven, just want to talk about Trent Simpson for a moment. I feel like at this point, Marlowe, Super Duper Kyle, and Simpson are the most consistent players on our defense. Look at that. Look at, look at, look at that team keep it clean. Just be lining stuff up. Anyway, he said, it blows my mind that even in week nine, Malik Harrison is still taking snaps away from Simpson. Do you think that's a hardball, not trusting rookies type of thing? I honestly don't understand it. He is clearly the best option at that position we have and should not leave the field for a struggling player. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. I'm with you. Like, Trent Simpson, with Malik Harrison – there's no need for him to be out in coverage. And we saw him in yesterday's game out in coverage. I'm like, oh, well, what is going on? That, that should not be that. Um, but Trent Simpson, he needs to be on the field more. more. Somebody said, now I can't confirm this because I didn't see it for myself, so I don't know. But somebody said there was a drive um, toward the end of the game where they said Roquan Smith wasn't even out there on the field. And it was just Trent Simpson the whole drive. And Ravens ended up getting a stop. But, so I, I'm not sure how true that is or not. But anyway, he needs to be out there more. He said, additionally, the Ravens tend to have at least one game a year where everyone forgets how to catch the ball. Steelers game last year and the Browns game this year, for sure. Uh, hopefully, we got it out of our system this year because I cannot take another game against the Steelers where we beat ourselves. Yeah. 
those are some of the worst games. The Ravens just beat themselves. It's like, oh my god. And now nah, you got to give credit to the other team too. Can't forget about that. But still, those are some of the most frustrating games. Because it's like, man, we had it so many times, but they just continue to give it away. He said, looking forward to the Thursday night football game and seeing them new Ravens helmets. Go Ravens. What if? Next question came from my guy JEP. He said, been a while engraving. Hope all is well. Let's get right to it. What if this year's offense and last year's defense was on this year's roster? Do you think that would be good enough team to get past the Chiefs and make it to the Super Bowl? They were a good enough team last year to make it past the Chiefs and get to the Super Bowl. But they decided, you know what? The Chiefs team, bad against the run, great against the pass. Let's just throw the ball. And we ain't really going to try to run against them. So Ravens just, that's one of them games where you talk about. The Ravens beat themselves. They make the job easier for the other team to where the other team got to be like, oh, that's, that's what the Ravens doing? Okay, cool. Let them do that. Let them be foolish. So that, that's what happened. So they were good enough last year to beat the Chiefs. This year they're good enough to beat the Chiefs again. Now, we, of course, we played them in week one and we lost. But this Ravens team was not the Ravens team who they are now. But now the Chiefs team, they weren't the Chiefs team who they are right now either. But when you look at this Ravens team right now, you look at the Chiefs team right now, and uh, by the way, go Bucks tonight. Bucks, I hope I hope that y'all get the Chiefs their first loss. But anyway, um, if you look at the Chiefs team right now, it's like Ravens should be able to handle that for sure. And and this this they they got to get it done this year for sure, man. They they got to man. Because if they no, nah, I ain't gonna talk about it if they don't. But they need to this year. Anyway, he said, and if so, would it be enough to win a chip against whoever makes it from the NFC? He said, well, Lamar owns the NFC uh, offensively, but that defense is suspect. Yeah, hey, against the NFC, man. This Ravens team, Lamar Jackson, he be doing all this type of crazy stuff. And this Ravens team, they show up against the NFC. So, yeah, for sure. They could definitely, whoever in the NFC, man, they could take them. He said, third and last question. I think we have enough on offense this year to, to put up points with the other elite teams. But what would it take or who can we pick up before the trailer deadline that will make an automatic impact on defense to get us to the bowl and win it? See, I like that. Because he said make an automatic impact on defense. He ain't say somebody that we could trade for on defense and they could sort of work their way in the lineup and whatnot and then hopefully make a few plays. And No, no, no. He ain't say a, a role player that we could acquire on, de on the defensive side of the ball. And they could, no, no, no. He said make an automatic impact on the defense to get us to the Super Bowl. So he's talking right here, right now, immediately. And he said, Crosby, Buda Baker, Clowney, Calais Campbell, let's go be more and like some bad gas. We out, LOL, go Ravens, flop. So, see, I, I love it because he's on the same page. Me and him, we got the same thinking. We don't just want somebody, oh, just help somebody come through. No, we want somebody that's going to come through and make a difference right away. Next question came from my guy, Nigel. He said, what's good? Was there a benching of Eddie Jackson? Because I don't remember seeing him. Yes, he was completely inactive for that game yesterday. Uh, he said, because he needed to be off the field. Love the press, man. I want Lattimore tonight, especially since the Saints lost again. EDC, you're up. The defense looked better and a good start, but it looks like the offense is uh, hunt out Brandon Stevens. That's not good, but I'm out like Eddie out of the lineup. Thank God. Wow. That man, he was celebrating yesterday that Eddie Jackson wasn't playing. But yeah, um, I, like I said last week, Marcus Williams, he was looking at that game last week and he's like, see, it's not my fault. Y'all want to bench me? But look, look what's happening. But now the Ravens, they could have gave up 14 more points because, again, Arthur Millette, just, he got beat. So they were still having their issues with guys ended up being free, being open. And then it's going to happen. Some, sometimes guys are going to get beat. But <laughs> getting beat like that over and over, whoo. How we go seven and three. Next question came from my guy Josh B. He said, What's up, great? Hope you and yours are doing good and your family is doing great mentally and physically. What's up, team? Keep it clean. Hope all of your families are doing good mentally and physically. That was a great team win on Sunday. My old defensive coach used to say, Doing a long drive, Ben, and don't break. And that's exactly what the defense was doing Sunday. You ain't lying. Uh, he said, A whole lot of bending, <laughs> no breaking, except getting head tapped by a quarterback. Yeah, that, ooh, that was rough. We got Moss on fourth down on a trick play. Marcus Williams got Moss by Bo Nix quarterback. Wow. Anyway, he said they play better but still need some work. Yes, they certainly do. Uh, the first drive on defense was a statement drive, starting with Williams coming down and getting that big tackle after getting benched and our DBs actually making a catch. Offense started slow, but after that, they didn't look back. Is it crazy to say Zay Flowers is already our best drafted wideout in Ravens history? It's not crazy to say that at all. It's funny because we were actually having that conversation during the live stream yesterday. But we're going to talk about that more in the, in the coming weeks. He said, because no hate, man, but he's way better than Torrey Smith, Hollywood, Bateman, and Perryman. I love it. A Ravens wide receiver has 654 yards in nine games and not all 17. <laughs> <laughs> LeVar continues to show why he's the best in the world And with another perfect passer rating He is the GOAT Whenever Mitchell comes back Which I think will be Thursday uh, We need to have a good balance with him and Hill Hill has been great and deserves to be on the field That's right Along the season Mitchell should get a couple of Henry's carries To save him for January and February I'm sending this before ADC makes amazing trades And yes, that's with an ES Because he's making multiple See, that's why you my guy 
That's why you my guy. But now, see, I got, I got to hurry up and get this video out before EDC start wheeling and dealing, and then it'll be null and void. He said, one of my questions is, who do you think EDC will trade for, and how many players do you think we will get? Uh, Thursday night football against the AFC North team. We know them. They know us. And like Rose said, we both don't like each other but respect each other. Everyone knows Chase is their guy, and Burrow will be throwing the heck out of the ball. My other question is, how does the Ravens beat a hungry and desperate Bengals team in Baltimore and our new beautiful uniforms and helmets? Yeah, you can't let the Bengals spoil the new uniforms and helmets. Don't, 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 don't do that, Ravens. But um, how do they beat the Bengals? You got to get that secondary right. Offense just got to continue to do their thing. Continue. Don't forget about Derrick Henry. Let him continue to do his thing. Lamar, just the offense just got to keep it up. Keep being diverse. Keep just hitting them in the mouth in so many different ways, man. Um, but as far as the defense, the defense, they got to do something about Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens is the weak link on defense right now. And something got to be done about him. Whether you got to give him extra help. But again, if you give him extra help, then that could take away from another position. But um, something got to be done uh, because he just been struggling. He been struggling. I've. How do you fix that? How do you fix somebody that can't get their head turned around? Well, I, I think maybe maybe the answer to that question is your previous question because you said who do you think EDC will trade for and how many players do you think he will get? So I could see EDC trading for um, definitely a pass rusher. I could see him trading for. A pass rusher and an interior defensive lineman. So two different defensive linemen. If I'm thinking like how EDC will probably do it, uh, I could see him getting a Jadavian Clowney and Calais Campbell. Uh, if he's thinking how I will want him to go, then it will be Max Crosby and a, no Max Crosby and Jeff Jeffrey Simmons. That's like that 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 wouldn't happen. I know EDC wouldn't go all crazy like that. Um, but I would say Max Crosby and Marshawn Lattimore.